This is really important. The governor here clearly participating in the Great Oregon Shakeout, a statewide earthquake drill, and she tweeted today this uh, today serves as an important reminder to have a plan with your family. Be two weeks ready and make sure you've signed up for emergency alerts. And by the way, she wasn't the only one. The state sent these photos out. I'm sure you know everyone here doing the classic drop, cover and hold on. The gold standard of earthquake safety, like get under a sturdy desk or table, thereby protecting yourself from falling objects. But is that always the best policy? Well, one earthquake geologist from Oregon State University says he wishes we would have more conversations about that. What is your take on that right. advice? That really kind of evolved from civil defense things from the 1950s and 60s when you're supposed to get under your desk in case of a nuclear attack. And it, it hasn't really gone through the same sort of vetting process as, as we would like to see. Professor Chris Goldfinger there, he went on to say, stop, drop, and hold on works great in countries like, say, Japan, who have had earthquake resilient building codes far longer than we have. So in short, a lot of our buildings are not stable enough to withstand a major quake. We have a bit of a different case. We have a lot of URM buildings, a lot of pancakeable, you know, lift slab type buildings and things like that. And so the question is, you know, is importing that drop cover and hold on policy that works great in Japan, is that really going to serve people the best and save the most lives? And so um, what I'm suggesting is that we just have a more reasoned conversation about whether that's good advice or not. So we've reported on Goldfinger's questions about this guidance before. The Oregonian did a write up on it today. You can see most of the headline there. Goldfinger told me he wants to be clear. He's not urging people to drop the gold standard central to today's drill and then just run screaming into the streets during the next quake. That would be insane. What he wants is research. And he says he's pushed multiple universities and agencies, including the governor's office, to invest in that research but no dice yet. So in the absence of that, I asked him, what are we, the non-scientists who would just like to not die during an earthquake, supposed to do? And the professor basically didn't want to give blanket advice, but he did tell me about one example, and that is his workplace. You know, I was able to walk around my building and take a look at it, and I looked up the year that it was built. It was 1964, I think, and I, you know, the same year that plate tectonics sort of hit the big time. And so I know it's old and I know it's vulnerable and I know it's not been retrofitted. And I also work on the first floor near the door. And so knowing these few little bits of, in, of things that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be a better idea to leave the building yeah, sounds that way. So that being said, Goldfinger was clear in his opinion for most people, especially at home, drop cover and hold on is still your best bet, at least until we know more.